Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in my Clueless Traveller series. Uh, today I am here in the beautiful New England area of New South Wales. I've come to a place called Bullock Mountain Homestead with my dad for a little cheeky midweek trip away. Um, it is currently the end of August here in Australia uh, and where we're from on the Gold Coast which is around about five and a half hour drive north of here uh, it's currently getting pretty warm um, and today I don't know if you can see behind me here where we are in New England about 15 kilometers north of Glen Innes it's about one degree Celsius uh, the, the ambient feels like temperature is minus two minus three which I think in Fahrenheit is down somewhere around about 30 30 degrees or something like that so very cold for what for what I'm used to we don't really get temperatures like this on the Gold Coast so it's one last little taste of winter for us before a, another long hot humid summer um, but yeah we've come here to this beautiful place you can see behind me the sun starting to pop up uh, the mountain Bullock Mountain is just behind me on the other side here and the sun is just starting to pop up and warm things up a little bit this um, property is around about 1200 acres uh, it's a super popular spot for camping freshwater fishing um, they've got powered sites camping sites uh, and we're actually staying in the homestead which if I come back down this way a little bit I'll show you guys that off in the distance dad's still in bed warming his bones up a little bit before we head out for the day um, the other really popular thing here is uh, gemstone foster king in particular sapphires and that's what we've come here for so I'll just whip around and show you the homestead off in the distance there we are that's the homestead there uh, yeah so we've come here for a bit of uh, gemstone foster king um, and this is something that dad and I've been talking about for around about 30 years we're finally getting around to it um, we've been here for two days now yesterday was our first day out foster king um, I'll roll a bit of footage for you guys um, about and um, do a bit of a voiceover and stuff over the, the footage that I've taken and if anything else exciting happens today I'll I'll show you guys but we did find a couple of sapphires yesterday very very small um, definitely not going to make me go out and quit my job but for us you know these are they're priceless they're little treasures you know and it's something that we've been talking about doing for a long time so one of them in particular is beautiful uh, this camera isn't going to do it justice um, and taking photos with the, the iPhone doesn't do it justice either and unfortunately I haven't got a macro lens but I'll do my best to show you guys what they look like um, and if we find any more today then you'll see them as well and uh, depending on what the weather's like I might go for a hike and, and take you guys with me on that as well but anyways enjoy the video guys this is Bullock Mountain Homestead near Glen Innes on the New England High Country New South Wales Australia So what we did, Dad found this little pocket here um, and we've cleared all of the, the big rocks out from that corner and stripped out as much of the, the gravel as we could and what we were doing was putting it straight into the sieves so you need, I think it's like a quarter inch and then an eighth, in, eighth inch sieve is what you use and you classify the, 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 um, the big rocks so you pull all of the big stones out of the top have a quick look for some gemstones in there if you find anything in the top pan you're in real good luck uh, and then you get down to the finer gravel in the next pan um, that's the pile from from yesterday out of out of this hole um, so it's quite a bit of work and we were using um, we've got our equipment over there we've got the bucket and I've got my backpack I've got a trenching shovel a couple of little trowels a plastic trowel a little pick um, a little rock pick and we're just even using our, our bare hands at some point. Um, but yeah, I'll show you the, the video of me sitting here sieving some of the, uh, the rocks out yesterday. Um, yeah, it's just an absolutely beautiful part of the country. I've never been down this way before and very, very keen to come back. Okay. 
coming back. All right, so we're right beside the little pocket that we dug yesterday. We've identified a juicy little crevice here with um, what looks like good gravel. Um, the only problem you've got in a spot like these we're finding with that so many people have worked is you're not sure whether you're digging up other people's wash or or what but this looks pretty hard packed there was some weeds and stuff growing in it so we're going to give this a go um, thought a really good tip for you if you want to go fosking for the first time is not be fat overweight and out of shape <laughs> uh, dad's dad's got Parkinson's so He's struggling a little bit, and um, yeah, after what did we do yesterday? About five, five hours? Yeah, five hours. Good five hours yesterday, and um, including a bit of a fall for me, which luckily I'm all good. Could have been a lot worse. Um, so yeah, it's really, really hard work, but it's enjoyable. Oh, it's great. Yeah, when you see that little little blue speck in the in the pan, it makes it all worth it. And it's a beautiful part of the world. Yeah, just it's absolutely just, gorgeous. Yeah, it's lovely. All right, well, we've got the first sieve of the day ready to go today. I'll get the camera back out if we find anything. Um, like I said earlier, the stuff that we're finding is super small and um, you can't really see it on camera. So if we find something that's big enough for us to hold in our fists, I'll get the camera out again. All right, let's get to it. Here's an example of just how much all of this has been worked. So this is all leftover people's wash from from their sieves. Um, obviously, someone's been here and cleaned out every little crevice all along here and all of the gravel down from around the uh, the edge of the creek here. Uh, you know, as you can see, it's really still. So this is a big um, low pressure point. So. Someone smashed all of the crevices and along there. You know, there's still little pockets of, of stuff here and there that if you want to come and have a scratch around, you never know your luck. Like Dad and I, we found, you know, three on our first day. Uh, you can see someone's been in under that rock there. Someone's had a bit of a scratch here. Someone's had a dig up in there. You sort of... You, you, you see a spot in the creek and you think to yourself, oh yeah, this could be all right. And then all of a sudden you look around and there's just other people's wash everywhere. So you've got to be persistent. Um, you've got to sort of do a little bit of research before you come and fossick for the first time. You want to try and be able to read the creek a little bit um, and imagine what happens to all of this land when the uh, the creek is in flood. You can see there's river stone and creek stone wash all the way further up among those small trees 
and you'll even see this tree in front of me if the light is any good you can see up here that's debris from the flood so you can see how high up the water comes through here so you just got to think to yourself when the water's up like that you know where are the the low pressure points behind rocks in front of rocks uh, cracks in bedrock that sort of run across the creek kind of like riffles in a in a pan or in a sluice Alright guys, so Dad and I went out for another few hours fossil king this morning. Today is our second full day here uh, and we're packing up and leaving tomorrow morning. Uh, so we've had two full days here at Bullock Mountain Homestead. Um, arrived Monday, then had Tuesday, Wednesday and then uh, drive home on Thursday. And it's just been a fantastic, fantastic experience. It's like I said earlier in the video, going fossil king for precious stones is something that Dad and I have wanted to do for a long time. Uh, it was quite eventful. Um, I didn't want to have the camera out too much because it's quite rugged down there and we both found that out the hard way. I had a pretty hard fall yesterday. Luckily for me, I've got a uh, little bit extra padding, um, but could have been a lot worse. Uh, I'm going to end up with a big bruise on my arm. I think you can see it there. I had a big egg that came up. Luckily that didn't break, um, my back was all good. A little bit stiff last night, a little bit stiff this morning, but we got moving. Um, and then yeah, today had a, uh, Dad had a fall on our way back up to the, to the car. Um, so I guess, you know, if you are coming out to do something like this and you've never done it before like us, just be really mindful of um, every step that you take. Don't rush, don't get excited. Um, just take your time. Um, this is probably the last time that, that you know I'll be able to do something like this with um, with Dad. Uh, his mobility is a little bit restricted with uh, Parkinson's. His balance is a bit off. Um, he did really well the last couple of days, but uh, yeah. So what I'm doing now? We just got back to the homestead um, after a couple of hours, and Dad's having a bit of a snooze. So I've, I'm heading off. Um, see the track behind me. I'm going to go and try and find the old Sapphire Mine site and possibly have a look around there, just um, maybe get some footage while I'm down there, see what it's like. Um, I'm not doing any more fossil king, I'm just going for a walk. I need to wear my, uh, my Columbia hiking boots in because next year Dad and I are doing a trip to Alaska uh, and we're doing a salmon fishing trip with some of his friends who live in Missouri. They're uh, going to show us the show us the ropes up in Alaska. so. I figure uh, it's time for me to wear the hiking boots in and um, hopefully I'll get a, a hike in while I'm over there in Alaska. Dad will be staying in the, uh, the RV or going into town with, uh, with Mary and Cam and um, hopefully I'll head off for a hike, uh, see a glacier, hopefully see a bear from a distance. But anyway, um, I'll pack you guys away and if I see anything cool on the way down to the mine I'll uh, get you out and let you have a look. All right, so here we're at the uh, towards the end of August, and we're heading into spring. And you can see here, I'm pretty sure that this is wattle, um, which, and this is going to put my grade seven social studies to the test. But I'm pretty sure that the wattle is the national flower of Australia. Um, and you can see how oh, the sun's just gone away, but 
absolutely beautiful and there's little native bees fl flying around buzzing around everywhere uh, but yeah like I said we're heading into spring and um, there's little wa beautiful wildflowers around everywhere stuff that we don't get back up where I'm from on the Gold Coast so if I see anything really pretty I'll get the camera out let you guys have a look just a bit of a bummer that the uh, sun decided to duck behind a cloud but as you can see beautiful gold yellow color and it's just everywhere at the moment it's just really pretty all right so this is pretty cool uh, this is part of the open cut mine um, and you can see I'm trying to keep you guys down out of the wind the winds just picked up um, but yeah you can see all of the old workings um, if I was to step back up behind me and sort of duck up out of this hollow you'd be able to see the full extent of this little workings that the uh, the miners have done back in the day I'm not 100% sure on how old the mine is and how recently it closed and when they were doing working here but um it looks like it's quite significant it's all open cut um, and I'll go for a wander and see if there's anything else cool to, to point out um, it's just interesting trying to see you know how far they've come and sort of what they were working in and what they were working down looking looking for uh, all right let's go for a wander around the site and see if there's anything cool that we can find I'm, I'm going to be doing something that uh, I picked up from watching a bunch of Foster King prospecting videos on YouTube as we all do now uh, and yeah you just keep an eye on the ground as you're walking and see if there's anything blue and shiny that pokes its face out of the little dirt for you uh, I think they call it specking maybe I can like I'm, I'm a professional now I've been doing this for two days so I've got to use the right terminology all right let's go and check out the rest of the site alrighty so that's the other side of the little pocket that I was just in just before and then if we just pan around you can see the scale of the uh, of the operation so that's the little top of the uh, the trommel up there um, so they're obviously cutting all of the cutting into here getting all, gathering all the material and taking it up feeding it into the uh, uh, the, the machine up there um, probably not the trommel that's not the word I'm thinking of uh, the feeder whatever that's called um, yeah so that looked like where they would have dumped all the material in and then it would have gone down through I'm assuming into a trommel a big barrel that spins around and worked its way down just like a normal sort of like gold mining operation I'd, I would assume uh, but if we pan around again if the light stays good for me so you can see down here I'm not sure if you can see a bit of rock wall so that's Reddystone Creek and that's the creek that we were panning in today and yesterday back up around the homestead and it comes all the way down here then I believe it snakes around and then there's an area further down here called the junction where it meets beady waters and uh, that apparently the the uh, the inside bend of that uh, junction is apparently a pretty good spot so if you're watching the video and you're thinking of coming here for a prospect um, we'll recommend that um, all right maybe we'll go down to the creek and, and have a look and see what it's like down here see if we can see anything blue looking up at us from the water Now this, this spot here that you can see there's workings all through here, this all looks like it's pretty fresh. And I'm pretty sure that this is where Mal, the, uh, the owner of Bullock Mountain Homestead comes down and he collects uh, buckets of material here and takes them back up near the, uh, near the homestead. And that's where they've got um, a little set up there to teach, teach you how to pan, so, or to sieve I should say. So, like us, if you've never been prospecting and uh, sieving for sapphires before, Mal's more than happy to give you a demonstration. Uh, the very first pan that he did to show us how it was done, there was a tiny little green sapphire in there, and this guy right here dropped it when he handed it to me. Uh, and then Dad and I have worked out a little bit. We practiced in it a fair bit before we went down to the creek. We found nothing. <laughs> so, that first sieve, tiny little sapphire, lost it. But this is, I'm assuming this is where Mal's getting all of the material from. Um, and I've also spotted a few little uh, um, camp spots like th where people have had fire. So I assume they probably bring their four-wheel drives down here and have a camp down at the mine as well, which is pretty cool. Um, I will 
tell you that it's around about a two kilometer walk from the main area at Bullock Mountain Homestead down here to the mine. Uh, there's a big uphill portion and then there's going to be another big uphill portion for me going back. Uh, bring a wide brim hat, um, put on lots of sun cream and like any Australian travel video the number one tip that you know that you can have is to keep your head on a swivel. Uh, Dad and I were about 20 meters from the creek yesterday and normally the last couple of days I've been taking the lead sort of like dad's been following me and I we got down we went through the little gate dad went through before me keen to get down to the creek and literally was one step away from stepping on a red belly black snake I'll put the photo in here so you can see I took a quick photo before we backed away but dad was literally one step away from ending our trip possibly his life prematurely uh, yeah so um, there's also um, in terms of wildlife here uh, lots of feral animals um, so deer goat and pigs so you want to sort of keep an eye out for pigs as well you don't want to run into a group of them um, especially this time of year spring you know they're having babies and stuff so they can be pretty pretty aggressive um, I would recommend if you're a photographer bring a telephoto lens bring a tripod which is what I forgot to bring with me on this trip um, because I would imagine Milky Way season here would be spectacular the skies have been a bit cloudy the last few nights so it's um I'm not feeling as bad about not bringing my tripod but it would have made filming some of this stuff a bit easier as well for me um, but telephoto lens there's amazing bird life here I think they've got it's like probably over a hundred species of birds that they've got here Rosellas, other little parrots, lots of finches, swallows. Um, I don't have that kind of gear with this camera, but if you do, um, it's it's a great spot. We've only seen the one wallaby while we've been here, um, but that's all right. We've seen the sheep, the alpaca. They've been staying with us at the homestead. Buddy, the farm cat, came and visited us the first night. Um, all right, I'll go get some more footage for you guys, and if there's anything cool that I find, I'll bust the camera out. If not. See you back home for a, a cold beer and the fire later on tonight. Well, there you go. Two seconds, like two seconds after I was telling you guys about not seeing any animals here, uh, there was a couple of, I think they're fallow deer that were just across the, the creek from me here. Um, there was two adults and a little baby and I'm downwind of them at the moment. So as soon as I sort of came in within smelling distance of them and stood on a stick they were up and out of there but there you go hadn't seen any wild animals for a couple of days and then all of a sudden a bunch of deer all right let's go explore the creek So here we go, we're a fair way down from the mine area that exists as it is now um, or when it closed down and I found this massive pit and I'm assuming this is maybe, I mean it's full of junk and crap but I'm assuming seeing as there's workings along here that this is possibly an old working that got turned into a tailings dam maybe. Um, so yeah, I mean, and you can see there's a little mound of probably tailings or something up there. So if you guys do come here, it's worth, if you've got the time, the energy to go for a bit of a wander. Um, carry as minimal gear with you as you can, I guess. Um, but you can see here, you've got like a, it's a gravel layer that it looks like they've all been having a scratch away in. Um, yeah, if you've got the, uh, the energy and the time, there's probably there's a whole lot of land here to explore and have a dig in uh, dad and I are just we don't have a four-wheel drive that's the other thing as well you probably want a four-wheel drive if you want to drive and camp throughout the um, the, the homestead area we've just got like a normal SUV and it was a uh, 
gravel road all the way in from from the uh, from the turn off so a good six or seven k's of gravel uh, so yeah four wheel drive friendly but not necessary but um, I just went and had a look down in the creek before and it looks like we probably would have had a bit more promise down this way if we'd, if we'd been able to get down so there's a little tip for you all right guys that's going to in my portion of the video where I'm talking, sorry I waffle on so much, I'm trying to get a lot better at doing this. I really should uh, start writing some scripts and stuff, but um, I just thought seeing as Dad and I were coming away for this trip, perfect opportunity for me to practice with my travel vlogs. Um, thank you so much for watching if you've made it all the way to the end. Um, just a couple of things I thought I'd give you guys some tips if you are coming Foster King for the first time. Uh, for sapphires in this area, you're going to need somewhere to camp and stay, obviously. There's plenty of places. If you jump on Google and have a look. Uh, you want to get yourself uh, a little rock pick, um, a little shovel. These are little things that you can get at Bunnings. You can get online really easily. Dad got a couple of fossicking kits from Amazon, I believe. Um, super cheap with a whole bunch of cool stuff in it. Um, but yeah, basically, you want a really good backpack, um, bucket, uh, containers to keep your your stuff in if you find any if you're lucky enough to find anything um, something that I know some people do that we were considering but we just were worried about how much we're gonna have to carry if you have a bucket and you take the scoop out of the the center of your of your find of your of your sieves your pans um, you take those concentrates out you can take them back to um, you know your accommodation and and sieve through them go through them with a light and and see if you've missed out on on anything with a bit of color um, yeah little shovel little pick plenty of water sunscreen some food uh, some sieves some proper sieves don't get the cheap ones um, we got some sieves online I think they might be they weren't cheap but I think they might have been gold classifiers and they kind of rise up in the middle so it's, you can't get the material in the middle it keeps sliding off to the side so you want to get a proper flat bottom uh, gemstone sieve and yeah um don't bring too many expectations we came here you know thinking we probably weren't going to find anything and first session on the first day we found three beautiful tiny little sapphires and then nothing for the rest of the trip um, but we've had a fantastic time i've really appreciated having this time with my dad uh, i've got to get back now he's had a snooze he's probably up wondering where i'm at thinking i might be lost out in the bush somewhere but we've had a fantastic time i highly recommend this place for anyone who wants to come and visit. Uh, we literally only scratched the surface on what you can do here. Um, I had a quick look on Instagram a couple of weeks ago and I saw that people were catching massive Murray cod in the in the creek here. Um, plenty of land, like plenty of real estate to go and sapphire hunt and have a look for some garnets and zircons and maybe a ruby or uh, I think they find topaz here as well. I found some Toyota Topaz from a headlight or something on the road just up there before I got a bit excited but that's it for this video guys thanks for watching stay tuned I'll try and refine my video technique a little bit more uh, shoot some more quality engaging stuff for you guys rather than just me just talking to the camera all the time um, next video will probably be on the Gold Coast back home on the coast a couple more videos coming from the Gold Coast and we prepare for the big trip to Alaska Ottawa, Yosemite, and Los Angeles next year. Stay tuned, guys. Um, appreciate your support, everyone who sort of sends me a message or drops a comment. Um, leave a message down below if you want any more information on this place, and um, I'll let you know. I'll sign out from here. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.